Hey there, Lick and Riffers! Welcome back to yet another awesome 12 string guitar lesson here on Lick and Riff, in which I'm going to help you utilize the 12 string sound for your rhythm guitar purposes. Okay, most guitar players, when you first encounter a 12 string guitar, we would usually play it as we would a six string guitar and that's not the way to play a 12 string because the focus is different okay usually when you first pick up a 12 string you play okay you play full and rich chords okay like the full g chord with three on the second string and c add nine and you enjoy the richness of the sound okay but then when you try to arpeggiate, you encounter a problem. Because usually... You try to play the 12 string like a 6 string guitar. And when you play a 6 string guitar, you usually want to highlight the high notes, which are on strings 1 and 2. But here on a 12 string guitar, you have high notes throughout the string set. Okay, the whole 12 string is high notes, okay, along with bass notes, of course, but there are high notes all over the place. So your focus needs to shift from the first and second strings to strings six to three. That's the secret. That's right, honking person. Right, so if you play G, for example, okay, let's take the G that we all love to hear and play and test out on a 12 string the first time that we pick it up. Okay? Now this is a beautiful sound and we have lots of strings okay? to play. Even if we just play the three high strings, which are now six, okay? you can you do a really slow arpeggio okay? if you want. Ah, that wasn't even complete. if you like. But if you try to focus on the bass strings, you get the 12 string sound instead of this. Okay? You can arpeggiate the high notes okay? and then shift your focus back to the bass strings, okay? which are now doubled. Okay? have high notes there and the same goes for any bar shape okay as a six string guitar player you would usually go for okay the three first strings but here you need the bass strings okay strings four five and six Okay? And it's the combination and the jumping around that creates the, the 12 string sound. Okay? Now, the more elaborate your chords get, the better your sound will be. Now, if you take A minor, for example. Okay? You, get, you get this. You get this high A note on the third string, okay? which is not which is not there on a regular A minor. Okay, so this is what you will want to highlight. Okay, you can play... Okay, you can open the third string and play it in A minor 7, but you can also try another voicing. You can play this. Okay, you can play this variation of A minor. A minor add 9. Okay, which is 5 and 7 on strings 3 and 4. Okay? And then when you have okay, 5 and 7 on strings 3 and 4, you have extra high notes. Okay? So the more random your picking patterns become, and the more you shift your focus to strings 3 to 6, the more you extract the 12 string sound instead of focusing on strings one and two. Okay? Now, of course, you'll be playing strings one and two, 
but sparingly. You just throw them in there every now and then. Now, the same goes for, for D, because on D, you have uh, just one extra note, actually, because this note is the high D. So all you add here is an extra A note. So the D chord kind of sounds just like it would on a on a six string. So you'd want to you'd want to try something like this. Okay, you'd want to try something like seven and seven on strings two and three. Okay, and then you get extra high notes. You can play the barred D chord. Okay, so you get a lot of high notes. And um, you still have that low D. Now, um, as I mentioned in a previous 12 string lesson, a really good tuning for uh, rhythm accompaniment would be drop D because then you'll have a low D uh, note and you'll be able to do a lot more than just the standard tuning. Okay, but let's stick to the standard tuning. For example, if you have B minor, okay, you have extra notes. If you open strings along, okay, you open the first string, the, the fifth, okay, you can... Okay, you get, you get extra high notes. If you do it here, okay, you get even, okay, you get even more options for high notes. So the more you focus on the bass strings, the better. Okay? And really, just by moving things around, you can find new, uh, new voicings. For example, if you take D sus2 and take it to 5 and 6, you get a terrific voicing for D minor 7. You can do this D minor. Okay? Now I know that some of you don't like high notes, really, really high notes on the third string, so just don't play it, but it's there. Okay, 10 and 10 on strings 2 and 3. Okay, and you can find new uh, variations by um, dissecting chord shapes. For example, you have E, okay, major, you have the bar on 4 C shape, you can take these two notes, okay, 4 and 6 on strings 3 and uh, 4, and then you have E. Okay, you have a really nice E. So you can play A minor, D minor, and E, okay, in completely different ways. See? And um, don't be afraid to... Okay, to rake the strings backwards next to the bridge. Okay, this creates a nice um, steely sound. As if it's coming from way back in your subconscious. Now, another cool trick to use here would be to add slight embellishments to the chords, but usually when we play a sixth string, we'll add, okay, we'll add, okay, the suspended notes, sus2 and sus4. Here, we'd want to play certain uh, short licks on the bass strings. So if we're on D, okay, playing the sus2 and sus4, Okay, won't do much then add the 12 string chorus sound, okay, because we have uh, a unison there. But if we add a zero and two on the third string, we immediately get an extra sound that we don't have on the sixth string. Okay. 
Okay, we get this. Same goes for A minor. Okay, two and zero on strings three and four. Okay. And um, the same goes for any other chord. Okay, if we're on G, you can do 0, 2 on the 5th string. You can do it on the 4th, you can do it on the 3rd. C. So your high notes become your low strings. That's the focus. So take everything I showed you, try it out, test it out, and just try to move things around. Now, um, one last trick. You know this uh, this chord shape, okay? The the barred E shape, but with open first and second strings. This sounds amazing on 12 string. Especially if you add extra bass lines. can't get this sound on a 6th fret. Um, all I did was, okay, a barred F, I took the bar off, opened the 1st and 2nd strings and moved it around. Okay, and you see, doesn't sound as good when you just strum it. Okay, the 12th string is less for strumming, more for arpeggiating. So, you subscribe to the channel and I will see you the next lesson. You go enjoy yourself and um, have fun with your 12th string. Bye for now.